Well, thank you, Wendell Weeks. And isn't he one great guy? You know, he really is. I talk to him frequently. We've done all kinds of things together to help Corning grow, to help manufacturing in New York State grow. But his caring for making this a caring, compassionate company, as exemplified by the story we just told, is second to none. And you know, companies that care about their employees and nurture their employees almost always do better than companies that exploit their employees. And there's no better company and no better CEO, not only about doing cutting edge technology across the board in so many different ways, but in also about caring about employees than Corning and Wendell Weeks. And one other point here, whenever they try to locate some new manufacturing, new research, they look to New York first. The glass is made in Canton. These, this great equipment here is made in Rochester. You know, I suppose they could have gone somewhere else, but they care about, but Corning cares about New York and the Rochester Finger Lakes area as well. So I want to applaud the employees who do the great job here. This is a very skilled workforce. We saw some of it ourselves. But I also would like the employees, you should applaud yourselves, this company, and this CEO for the great job that they did. I'm so glad to uh, be joined by Governor Hochul. Uh, I, we've known each other a long time, uh, even when she was a congresswoman and when she was a uh, county clerk. She has always cared about jobs in New York. And now as governor, she has the ability to take that caring and that intelligence and that persistence and turn it into real jobs. And she does that over and over again in every corner of the state and here in upstate New York particularly. And she, is, she does a great job and deserves our thanks and applause as well. And my dear friend Joe Morelli, I mean, no one fights for Rochester more than him. The number of times he calls me each week, month, says, we got to do this for Rondecoit. We got to do that for Gates. We got to do this for the center city of Rochester, for schools, for jobs, for money. You know, we've gotten a lot of money, a lot of infrastructure money. Adam's shaking his head, yes. <laughs> and he and Joe are just pushing, pushing, pushing to see a large chunk of that money land right here in the Rochester area. So, Joe, thank you as well for being the great congressman you are. Now, we all know that Rochester has always been known for eye-catching industries, like photographs and more. But now, Corning, you see, Wendell knows laughing at my jokes. Even when they're not that good, he laughs. Um, but now Corning is boosting the greater Rochester area to new heights as the preeminent world leader, not just national leader, but world leader in optics and photonics. And let me tell you, the eyes of the world are now in Monroe County in upstate New York as the next global tech leader. Here in the Rochester Finger Lakes area, we have nearly 150 high-tech optics companies that employ about 17,000 workers. It's going up today. The number isn't shrinking, it's growing. Our great research institutions, the U of R, RIT, MCC, the Rochester Laser Lab, are pumping out workers in these fields. And we need more of these workers, more of these workers. Why? Because jobs like this, optic jobs, are like the hot dogs Rochester ate on July 4th. They are white hot. Only skilled optic technicians can make these unique products and the equipment made here in the Finger Lakes, that, and it's going to fill critical gaps in our supply chain. And what you're doing here brings manufacturing back to the United States because what you make is so important. The products are, are essential for major semiconductor manufacturers to expand chip production here in the United States. And this industry is growing fast. Chips are in everything, from electric cars to our cell phones. And if the pandemic has shown us anything, it's that we need to make more of these products, these unique and special products, here at home in the United States. 
And as the chip industry continues to grow here in the United States, it's going to mean even more jobs here at Corning's operations in Fairport and Gates and helping support these companies. That's because the production equipment that we all witnessed as we were taken on a tour that's made here in Monroe County, this equipment is used by every major chip maker in every step of making their chips. Without facilities like this, our chip industry would fall apart and our economy would fall apart. That's how essential what we're doing here is. And it's going to mean, as I said, more jobs and more growth. Right now, as Wendell mentioned, I am pushing. I was the author along with Todd Young, he a Republican, me a Democrat. It's not a uh, partisan issue. Todd Young of Indiana. Uh, Todd Young and I created the U.S. Innovation and Competition Act, or USICA. That would make a $52 billion investment in the semiconductor production here in the United States. You know, we do all the research and we have firms like this, but right now only about 8, 9, 10 percent of the manufacturing of chips is done here. And we're at risk that China and Taiwan, if they have all the manufacturing, could cut off vital supplies and just really damage our economy in a very real way. So we want to bring that manufacturing back here. That's part of the USICA bill. And the other part is to invest in science, including optics. So we are at the cutting end, cutting, cutting edge of research here. The investment we're making in this bill, USICA bill, is critical to our nation's supply chains. Look at all the problems the auto industry. We've had the plants nearby, the Ford stamping plant and the Tonawanda plant, have to temporarily shut down because they didn't have chips. Not that people didn't want to buy their cars. They have long waiting lists. So it's important to every industry here. And it is also, what we're doing here, is important for national security. If we don't have, the defense industry depends on chips. And if we don't have a domestic supply, imagine, imagine what's, what another country that's not so friendly could do to us. And finally, and just as importantly, this, this bill is about a four-letter word. Don't worry. J-O-B-S. Jobs. We can deliver more jobs, and the fact that Corning has these facilities here and is growing these facilities here is another argument that the governor and I will make as we attempt to bring big chip manufacturing and big chip, chip fabs here uh, to upstate New York. So Corning will tap this funding to grow here, but every chip maker that taps this funding is going to need Corning and the products made here to boost their businesses and all the jobs in the Finger Lakes. <coughs> it is a win, win, win. Win for Corning, win for jobs here in the Rochester area, and win for the, both the economic and national security of the United States of America. The bill's been bipartisan from the start, and we're fighting to get it done right now. It's too important. It's so important to New York because, as I've mentioned, the investment in the chip industry doesn't just stay within the high-tech factory walls either. It spills out over into the community as people shop in the stores, go to our main streets, our restaurants, et cetera, things like that. So in conclusion, I cannot commend Corning enough for seeing how Monroe County is ready to power the future of America. With the labor optics and fine-tuned equipment here that help make chips that are getting smaller and smaller, the prospects for this plant and new jobs here is getting bigger and bigger. When people about tech, you always hear them talk about Silicon Valley. Well, let me let you in on a secret. None of this would be possible without the work here in the Genesee Valley. So to Corning, to all the people who work here and the new people who will work here, thank you, thank you, thank you for leading the charge to help solidify Rochester as the home to the future. I will continue to fight with you in every single way to see that you grow from strength to strength. Thank you. And now, as I mentioned, somebody who has so fought, fought so hard and so effectively 
for jobs in upstate New York and around the state, um, uh, be both before she was governor and now even more as governor, is our wonderful governor, Kathy Hochul. <laughs>